I share the sense of shock and dismay that the entire nation must feel at the despicable act that took the life of the nation's president. On the personal side, Mrs. Eisenhower and I share the grief <coughs> that Mrs. Kennedy must now feel. And we send to her our prayer, prayerful thoughts and sympathetic sentiments at this, in this hour. General, how would you counsel the American people at this time? In the face of such a terrible thing, I'm sure the uh, entire citizenry of the nation will join as one man in expressing their, not only their grief, but their indi indignation at this act, and will stand faithfully behind the government. General, could you tell us how you got the word? I was at a meeting uh, for the United Nations. And uh, while there, a member of the meeting was called out and uh, came back and told us the news. Although at that time, uh, uh, we did not know the president was dead. We did not know when I got back here at that time that he was dead. But um, matter of fact, we had a, the last message we had was one rather of hope. And the entire company, I merely paused for a minute at the request of the chairman and each of us in his own way uh, said a silent prayer for the president. Yes, Should there be any concern, sir, over national security at a time like this? No, I think the whole nation now would be uh, almost all of us security agents. Will the nation be all right in a few months ahead? Oh, I'm not going to uh, predict anything of that. I just say this. The American nation is a people of great common sense. And they are not going to be stampeded or bewildered. Thank General, you, Mr. President. How history has uh, have assassinations affected uh, the political course of events? Well, of course, in Lincoln's uh, assassination, you were the uh, presidency went to a man who was a registered Democrat, uh, Mr. Johnson. In uh, Garfield, I doubt that there was any. And, of course, McKinley, that brought in uh, uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Of course, there have been other attempts in late years. Uh, Mr. Truman was at a grave threat toward his, to his life. And Mr. Roosevelt, just before he was inaugurated, you remember, down in, uh, when the Mayor Cermak was killed, was, uh, ran a very grave uh, risk. There, these things have happened, and, and, and it seems inexplicable to me, because Americans are loyal. And it's just this uh, occasional psychopathic sort of uh, uh, accident that occurs, and I, I don't know what we can do about it. Could you say anything, General, about how people will feel abroad from all your experience with the United Nations and others? How will it be taken abroad? Well, I think they will be... Uh, a bit bewildered. This, um, in the civilized countries of the world, this doesn't happen uh, so often. And uh, you remember in the, the starting of World War I, the uh, murder of the Archduke Ferdinand, I think his name was, why well, this itself almost, uh, well, is one of the contributory causes to uh, that war. And, uh, but here, I, I just don't know what happens. And it, but we are a nation that where our freedoms are allowed or are uh, observed in such a way that everybody is uh, uh, ready uh, to, I mean, everybody is, uh, you might say, capable of doing this if he's ready to put his own life on the line. General, how will you spend the rest of today and tomorrow? How do you, how I, do you spend the rest of today and then tomorrow? Okay. I expect, I have canceled the dinner date that I had for tonight. Tomorrow... I'm going immediately to my home, and if I'm wanted for any purpose whatsoever, I will, of course, be available. Do you have any advice for the American people at this time? No, as I said, I know the American people will stand solid, and they will not be uh, stampeded. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good night, uh, fellows.